So a uh, viewer wants to talk about K-12 funding and where that might go. Um, and I guess we should say, you know, pre-K, too, because that's part of the discussion as well. Who wants to take that question? Where, where is that likely to go? Senator Nina, we'll start with uh, you. Well, I, I would expect that you would see that some increase in the funding. Um, I also would expect, particularly with the new majority in the House and being much more of a rural majority, that we're going to see some significant discussions about funding equity because there are some real challenges there um, and some grand discrepancies in, in who's getting what. Uh, I mean, uh, you hate to pick on Minneapolis, but they're an easy target. I mean, they're getting fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 from the state. You have other districts that are literally getting less than half of that. Uh, and, and that's a concern and that's a problem. But I think you, you'll, you'll see some increase in, in the K-12 funding. Just Yesterday, I believe it was, in the Senate E-12 committee, we heard the proposal for universal pre-K. Um, and we have a question from a viewer here who's very much in favor of that and thinks we should do that. And so let's, let's talk about that. Uh, well, th there was some sticker shock on that. Mm -hmm. It was almost $600 million mm -hmm. uh, to do that. And um, I, I highlighted the fact in committee that that one proposal was probably it was at least as much and probably more than all of the new money we put into every grade in the last budget, just that one proposal. So uh, <laughs> I, I think it, it seems that uh, the, the Democrat majority is kind of walking back away from that because to do that and to try to do right by education funding, give a little boost here and there, um, I, it's just I can't see how they can do both of those. You know, as I, I'm entering my, uh, just starting my 10th term, and uh, as long as I've been there, I've never seen where we haven't given education, K-12 education, more money. And uh, I'm sure that's going to happen. Uh, when the Republicans are in the majority, it's usually on the formula. Yep. And I, I think that'll probably happen. I, I think you're going to see some, uh, maybe some policy reforms. I don't know what those are. I don't serve on that committee, but uh, talking in our caucus, it looks like there'll be some uh, policy reforms in K-12 education. Uh, but uh, I'm sure there will be an increase on the formula. Yeah, and, and, and I can assure you that certainly coming out of the, the Senate Republican Caucus, uh, you're going to see a strong focus on quality, on outcomes, on equity, on flexibility, innovation. Uh, I am actually, uh, I spoke with uh, your budget chair today. She wanted to get together, and I uh, wanted to get together. We're going to be doing that next week, as well as Sandra Erickson. She's the chair of the Education Innovation Committee. Um, uh, I expect that you will see some, some <coughs> actually fairly significant innovative approaches to try to to look at what some of the real problems that we have in our education system. As good as we are in Minnesota, we have some real problems, um, and we need to get our hands around that and try to, to do something different to try to get those addressed. So when we're talking about education, one of the questions that comes up from time to time is the question of school choice, and we have a viewer from that great Minnesota community, <coughs> Unidentified Town, who wants to know what the legislature is doing uh, to... Um, expand or provide school choice, and if there's going to be any discussion of that in this session. Senator Nina, I'll start with you. Uh, yes, there will be. Uh, I just met with somebody today uh, that is representing a coalition um, for uh, school choice. They've got a couple of proposals that will be put forward. They're hoping to be able to get them passed in the House. Um, That's one of the things I'll be talking to your chairs about to see what, what the likelihood of that happening is. Um, and, and the Senate will be talking about that. I, would, I, I wouldn't put any money on seeing it pass through the Senate because of the leadership that we have there, uh, and they've not been receptive of that in the past. Uh, but hopefully we will have a good discussion on that. Hopefully we can get some things passed through the House so it can come to the table and we can talk about <laughs> what that would look like. In my opinion, when you look at some of the problems we have, and, and again, like I say, I hate to pick on Minneapolis but they, and, and St. Paul, they have one of the worst achievement gaps in the country. Uh, I think Los Angeles might be worse. Um, other than that, uh, it's us. And, and they have a graduation rate of about half. Uh, th those, are, those are bad numbers. Um, and, and that's one of the problems I, I referenced earlier, where we have, we have some real problems in Minnesota. Uh, and you're talking tens of thousands of students <coughs> in that school district. And so we have to figure out what are some options? Because what we've been doing for these children is not working. I think uh, educational choice is one of them. And for example, when you look at the Minneapolis School District, about 30 percent, maybe one in three, maybe a little less than that, of every student in the Minneapolis District 
opts out of the traditional public system. They either open and enroll into a neighboring district, or they go to a charter school, or they go to a private school. So essentially, what you have is every student that can get out is getting out right now. That's a huge percentage. Uh, because they've got problems, and uh, this could be one of the pieces of the solution in, in dealing with that there. But, uh, but we do have other challenges statewide as well. We have well, and, and I know in St. Paul, for example, they have a number of immersion <laughs> schools that are, are, are full, overflowing, yes. and uh, people are taking advantage of that. I know that, you know, when I first started many years ago, back in the late 90s, I think Arnie Carlson at the time was the governor. He proposed that uh, vouchers for fo folks in Minneapolis and St. Paul to send their kids to uh, alternative schools, uh, private schools, for example, and, and that would be a huge benefit to those folks. Uh, we should at least start something like that with those folks.